Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report, and we have uh, the uh, illustrious uh, Tim Alexander Earl of Sterling. And by the way, he's my co-host uh, throughout the week when we talk about emergency reports. He puts them up on a live stream channel. He often pops in on other shows through the week. And I can tell you, it was uh, uh, you are a remarkable find because there's two areas in which you shine over any other host that we have on. Number one, your ability to perceive military strategy and geopolitical strategy is stellar. No one else is in your class. And number two, you're a believer and you understand where the hell this is going. Uh, and where it's going... Hell's a good is, word. Uh, right, hell. <laughs> and by the way, I get up in the morning and I thank God for my beautiful, wonderful, and absolutely gorgeous wife, Michelle, and my wonderful family. And I thank God for all the things that God has allowed me to do to bless other people. But then you know what I do? And, and this is down not on my knees, but on my face. I thank the Most High God for Obama. There is no one that crystallizes the hellishness of what they want to do to us more than this man. No conservative, no John the Baptist could do what this crazy maniac has done to the conservative right to crystallize just the horrors that these maniacs want to do to us. Well, I, no think, one. I, I think he's I think he's waking uh, the public up, and I think the public is beginning to wake up to lots of false flag uh, events like Sandy Hook. I yeah, think the veterans today are article that outed it as a as a Mossad uh, hit team that went in and killed all these little babies. Uh, you know, it, it could not have went down the way the state police said it did, just like 911 could not physically have went down the way we were told the official conspiracy theory. And people are waking up. And, and when you once you wake up to the fact that you had a team of people that went in and a much larger team who planned and was covered up by the government at the highest levels and killed 20, 20 kindergartners and plus other teachers and all, and then used this to try to take our rights as American citizens away to set us up to be slaughtered and goose-stepped into the gulag. Uh, then when you, when you really perceive that this is what's going down, you say, oh, my God, what are we dealing with? This is right out of hell. And it is right out of hell. That's the yeah. point. This is demonic. Yeah, we, Tim, we need to be more strident. I don't. I didn't detect enough. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm too soft. <laughs> yeah, you're too soft in Obama. Uh, l- listen, the the Reich under when they burnt the Reichstag building, the actions of Vladimir Lenin, the actions of Mao Zedong. Although he killed millions of people, these early stages of Obama are more bold, more horrendous, and more in your face than any other empire in history, going right back to Nimrod. There's nothing more narcissistically self-centered over the top, right in your face, I'm the devil's minion. I mean, I'm sure in the morning, he gets up in the morning and he polishes his, spiritually his horns and he, and he, and he spray, spray paints his tail to make sure it's still red. But well, Obama, Obama is the, the quintessential puppet example of why this is a, a world run by the well, people well, of uh, Dr. Bill, you're a physician, and, and unlike some physicians, but like many other physicians that I know, you're disgusted with, with the, uh, the whole American health care system because you know how corrupt it is and how wrong it is. But this bit of Obama uh, uh, to trying to turn doctors into government police state snitches and asking people, telling doctors to ask people, do you have guns? Uh, what kind of guns do you have? And all this. This is right out of the communist and Nazi playbook. I mean, this is, this is pure Stalin, pure Lenin, pure uh, Hitler and, and, and all those characters. This is, this is horrible. This is not America. This, not, not, we should not tolerate this kind of crap. Now, 10,000 years from now, there'll still be radio. I don't care if they've got 3D, 4D, brain interface, multimedia, whatever. Radio will still exist because you know why? With radio, you can use your own imagination. So listen to this little clip I'm going to give. Uh, we need to make sure that people are totally subjugated. <laughs> so if we take away the guns, we destroy the currency, eventually we take away all the jobs, we make sure all the banks and all the pension funds invest in the third world, we destroy their environment, and we tell them it's because there's too many people. We then make sure all these American women who want to have freedom to have babies aborted, we take care of it. Don't worry about abortions, we'll sterilize you. No abortions necessary. Don't worry, people. We'll give you a place to live. It's we'll sterilize 
Sure. Whether you want to want it want us to or not, because we'll put it in your food, your genetically right. modified corn. Right. Don't worry about health care. You'll never get health care because it can't be given posthumously. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about food and shelter. We have a cell for you, and we have guards. Don't worry about, about breathing, because when you breathe out, we tax you, because you generate carbon dioxide. <laughs> Don't worry about sunlight, because you'll never see the light of day. Don't worry about anything. We'll take care of you. Yes. The state is your friend. <laughs> The state is your fan. And don't worry. We own you. <laughs> we just don't salivate. We digest you. You know, the people... <laughs> <laughs> People need to grasp this, you know. They need to grasp that what we have is a empire of clay and iron. And I tell about this. Obama is a stretched, skinny, long-legged Mac daddy, as that Pastor Wright talks about. Um, stretched well, over he, what I call a demonic entity. Emmanuel used to frequent gay bathhouses, and they both had membership in the biggest gay bathhouse in Chicago. And I believe they were, pro when they were younger, they were probably prostituting themselves to older gay guys. Now, Adolf Hitler did much the same thing in Vienna when he was a struggling artist, and he, he ended up with syphilis, which he was treated for uh, pretty much all of his life. And, I mean, there are parallels there that uh, are, yeah. are, are shocking. But, but that's the least of his problems. Hitler, by the way, Hitler had a very shady background. The reality is he was one-fourth bastard Rothschild. And, and who is Obama? This has never been, you know, it's been all swept under the rug. But we don't know who the man is. We don't know who his mother is. We don't know who his father is. We don't know where he went to college. We don't. It's all a fraud. And the only way they can be a fraud is you have six companies that are owned by the globalists, staffed by Zionists, that control 96% of American mainstream news media. They are treating the public like a mushroom farmer raises mushrooms. You keep them in the dark and you feed them manure. Right, so and none, of this stuff, none of these false flags could go down without a owned and controlled propaganda machine that's called mainstream news media. Exactly. Tim, let's go through the stories you have posted up on your on your web blog, uh, which you do an amazing blog every day. Everybody should read this. And by the way, I, I want to announce this, and I've kind of kind of strong arm you to do this. You need to put out a, a regular newsletter that expands on this, and people should I know. pay. My mom's mom been sick, and I've been. We're just starting another semester, and yeah. And anyway, yeah. You, you should, even if it's only a, a, a small blog, and even if it's like five dollars a month for people to pay to actually get this special blog newsletter, yeah, I know your analysis is level-headed. It actually takes into account geopolitical, financial, and military aspects, and equipment that people don't know. For example, when they think, for example, Obama is foolishly thinks. That, that we're protected, say, from EMP attacks from Iran or Syria or cyber attacks from the Blue Army. The man is a fool. You know, people assume he has a normal intelligence. No, I think he has what's called negative intelligence. He's a negative genius. He actually has an IQ of 170 minus. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you uh, know, uh, here's the thing Obama is a front man, and that's all he is. He's not important. He sits in the Oval Office and props his feet up on the historic furniture and with contempt, because he has contempt for America and contempt for the White House. He's a, he's a face man. He's a puppet. And he does what he's the teleprompter reader in chief. And that's all he is, and that's all he's ever been. And he's surrounded by people that control him. And since they killed Kennedy... The, the only person that kind of got outside of that box, well, Nixon tried to, and they, and they forced him out of office. Jimmy Carter tried to from the other direction, from the left, and he fell on his face. But these guys, since Kennedy, they've all been puppets. Do you, do you know the reason why Kennedy uh, did the right thing? First off, he's a decent man and he's a patriot, but what he did is he saw his specter. In other words, he saw his ghost when he had Addison's disease, and he knew he was going to see his maker in a not-too-distant future. So he became a righteous man with an eternal perspective, and that's why he supported the Republic. I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. 
Welcome back. And um, if you detect a little energy and uh, determination, the thing is that uh, neither uh, Tim Alexander nor Deagle has <clears throat> the Forrest Gump syndrome. When you are willing to step into the breach, really the battlefront, the battlefront of the truth, the truth that when we have people like Alex Jones who step forward with uh, uh, Pierce Morgan, the, uh, the, uh, the red coat, when you have people like us that step forward and tell the truth, your mouth will dry up. The spittle will literally stick to the roof of your mouth. You will no longer be able to spit because Obama has taken that all away. You can no longer say this is a conspiracy theory. You can no longer say when they say that the caliber of the weapon that killed these children was two two three when there was no gun except the gun locked in a trunk for this young man who killed himself. You can no well, longer I, say... You know what? I understand that uh, because the Sandy Hook area is near a key strategic U.S. Navy base that uh, Russian satellites and uh, Russian naval intelligence has a video of what happened uh, showing three shooters uh, going into the school. They have it, and they've evidently given it to our naval intelligence people and some others. Um, so this, you know, this is scaring the hell out of a lot of people on the dark side because they went to the edge, and they might have went a little bit too far. Well, you know what's really happening here? What's really happening, as I said, uh, Bonner is you know, what I call crying tears, and they, quote, jumped over what's called a fiscal cliff. The real issue is not the fiscal cliff, which is totally manufactured as a debt limit. As it says, and we talked about this the other day with uh, <clears throat> we're our experts about Dr. Bob Thiel, uh, which is Habakkuk, that he who reads this on tables of stone in Habakkuk chapter 2, run with it. But he also talks about in Habakkuk, who was a baker, by the way, and a prophet, that you cannot borrow money forever. You can't have 46% of your currency borrowed from the communist Chinese and figure eventually they won't ask for their, like a Shylock and the Merchant of Venice, their pound of flesh. You cannot do this. You cannot devalue the dollar and freak out the, the communist Chinese and say, by the way, all that debt you had, it's gone by a third. <laughs> and the Chinese go, we want to invade you. We want Idaho. You give us Idaho, we're clean. We're okay. Yeah, we what? take North Dakota and South Dakota for good measure. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right now, for example, part of the deal, people don't understand this, because of this debt game, which, by the way, is a game because the Chinese owe us more money than we owe them. This goes back before the revolution, and we had experts on a few months ago talking about this. This is a game played by the globalists so that we end up with, I think it's up 57 different trade zones. The biggest one is a 50 square mile area in Idaho that this crazy governor has authorized. It means total access by trucks originating in, in Hutchinson, Wampo, a communist People's Republican Army ports uh, from Encinitas uh, to all these other ports across uh, 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 Mexico. They're completely run by the Communist Party. We can put containers of everything from weapons and materials and guillotines and anything you want to put in there, a smorgasbord of Armageddonite disasters. And yet, our politicians like Obama says, no problem, free zones, no problem, you can drive your truck all the way from Via Cardenas all the way through to Houston, and guess what, the terminus is Winnipeg, Manitoba. Isn't that a wonderful? Yes. You know, um, I'm 62. Christmas Eve uh, was my, my birthday, and I'm 62. Now, in a lot of ways, I hate being 62 years old. I mean, I'm, oh, man, I'm getting old, you know, and uh, I, I can't pick up the, the younger chicks anymore, you know. I'm too old, you know. Okay. <laughs> but I want to tell you, it's, sometimes it's nice to have some years behind you because I grew up in the 50s and the 60s in America Midwestern suburbia and you know what things were really good you know we didn't lock our doors uh, living in town when I was a little kid well we had uh, on the, the the side door was unlocked and the milkman came two or three times a week and he walked in about 5 a.m. and if there was a note on the refrigerator which we always called the ice box because that's what my grandma called it the, you know he would want some milk or ice cream or something well and then you'd leave some money out and he'd make change and put it in the refrigerator or the freezer for you 
and once a month the the gas meter reader would come and he'd open the door meter reader he'd walk in the kitchen he knew where everything was he walked down in the cellar meet the reader and walk out nobody shot him the door was unlocked my my late wife michelle uh they lived in the country and their back door didn't even have a lock and they'd go uh to visit relatives for a week and nobody would be there and nobody came in they didn't worry about it because we didn't have hardly any crime and most women worked in the home not uh, there were there weren't latchkey kids and yet a man was the sole breadwinner and you had plenty of everything we always had a new car and a car that was maybe four or five years old and we always had if we wanted to eat steak every night we could have i mean we didn't want to but we ate nice steak you know two three times a week if we wanted it we weren't pressed for money now we were millionaires we were average middle class people but now it's it's horrible. Most of these kids in college can't get jobs. I mean, I have kids I teach, and I say, can you, if you try real, real hard, can you get a job for $10 an hour? And most of them say, no. No. They're, they're not out there. $10 an hour. Try to, try to raise a family on $10 an hour. But try I, to I'll live say on where $10 the, an hour. I, I, I can tell them how to get a job, though. Do you want to know my three-point plan? Get rid of the Federal Reserve. Get rid of the no, political no, 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 no. wars. Oh, okay. <clears throat> no, no, it's much, it's much simpler. We don't need to wait for the Federal Reserve and all this stuff. The first thing you do is you commit a crime or you smoke marijuana. You end up uh, pissing off a police officer and getting assaulted and saying you're resisting arrest. And then you're going to get free meals, sex changes, and you're going to have a job stamping out. You're going to have a job stamping out license plates, gardening, uh, manufacturing. By the way, most people don't realize that the major company that's owned by Carlisle Group, by the Queen by the Bin Laden family, by the Queen, by the way, the Queen of England. Oh, not, not Queenie Queen herself. The Queenie herself owns the Carlisle Group, and the private prison systems went to all the governors of the four northern states and said, guess what, if you guarantee us 98% occupancy, you got it. Just guarantee us occupancy. Yeah. yeah. Now, well, all, that means, a, you know, <laughs> that's a new form of slavery, isn't it? Right. So, in other words, if you want to get a job, don't go to college. Go hold up a seven prison. <laughs> right. <laughs> stop on the freeway and uh, stop on the freeway uh, and just piss off a cop. You don't even need to have a weapon. Just piss them off. And then and then resist arrest. You know, just tug your arm while they're trying to zip tie you. Don't don't hit them. Don't have to even do that. All you have to do is maybe spit on them. If you spit on a cop, you're going to the big house, man. Now I'm not, I'm just being sarcastic here, but what I'm trying to say is, we have a situation now where it's like Vladimir Lenin said. Uh, if, if I, show me the man, and I'll give, show you the crime. In other words, I'll invent some way to put his ass in jail. Yeah. And that's what the government's doing. Uh, that's, that's sad, but <clears throat> that's where we're at. You know we have more people <clears throat> per population in prison than North Korea, than Iran, than, uh, well, name it, uh, People's Republic of China, Vietnam, any communist country, any fascist country. We have more people as a percentage of our population <clears throat> in prison than any country on earth. That's not yeah. America, but it is. It you know, uh, I, I was uh, in uh, October 10th, 1993, I had this vision. I'm going to tell you when I come back. I had this vision, and I'm going to give this story. If it doesn't bring you to tears, it should. But you need to know where we're going, and it's to the dark place. And again, God loves us, and he's going to bring us out of this. But it's oh, yeah. going to get very unpleasant first. Oh, yeah. to the uh, Nutramedical Report. Just got a uh, urgent report from Dr. James McCanny, and I'm going to see if we can get a hold of Dr. McCanny. Uh, he's been on the program a number of times until he was doing some work in Central and South America. We'll try to see if we can get Professor McCanny back on. Or um, uh, Basically, here's what he said in the Skype message which he sent to me, and he's going to talk about it on the show today on his show. Okay, And he gave, sent me the link, which I can post also the MP3, because he's already got it posted. Dr. Bill, the issue with asteroid DA-14I, seen as possible NASA scam, military has stopped a reporting position some time ago, as you reported. Last week, NASA leaks an announcement that they sent two mega spacecraft to move it off course and save the world. 
listen to my show this week for details. Now, what people need to understand, uh, I was a civilian doctor on contract for U.S. Space Command at Shriver Air Force Base, Falcon, Colorado. And they gave us a very profound 440-seat theater uh, presentation about U.S. Space Command and how, in fact, a base out of Westminster, Colorado, that's linked to the main command center there at Shriver at Falcon, Colorado, how uh, Nearer's object uh, space technologies are at a level where we have had since the mid-80s technology to deflect uh, deep space objects like asteroids and comets coming into our, into our nearer space that can either cause a major uh, comet storm or asteroid uh, impact. Uh, and it appears that this is another example of that. We have had objects to report on spaceweather.com and other sites. The military stopped back in uh, May reporting the positions of things like the uh, s uh, 2012 uh, uh, comet that is at least 26 kilometers across. We're talking about four times the size of the one that ended the dinosaurs. We're literally passing through the tail of that comet as we speak, and it's heading on toward Mars. It will pass toward the sun. We don't know if it'll melt or break up, but we do know that the tail will take a month for the for Mars to pass through the tail completely. We know that on my birthday, one month from yes, from two days ago, the 15th, the 15th of February, we have a uh, an asteroid that's 197 meters. That's a big damn asteroid, 800 feet across. Will pass at less than 5,000 miles uh, over the surface of the Earth, and it could be closer because they stopped reporting the actual distance and started out 100,000 miles. So what we need to know is we're in a debris field of the galaxy along the galactic plane. Uh, the U.S. government has freaked out. The reason why the gun control, the reason why the virtual currency, the reason why the mark of the beast is the New World Order globalists have decided that we all should die, just like the movie 2012. The reason is not uh, because of the scenario that they post, <clears throat> but because they think extinction-level events are going to kill much of the population, and they're going to try to hide, like it says in Revelation 6, in underground cities and lairs. And as it says in the Bible, they shall hide themselves in the face of the Holy One of Israel, but they shall not. In fact, like the Morlocks, they're not going to go down there to live for 80,000 years and come out to eat the Eloi. They're going down there to die. It will become their tomb. It shall bind them together like the tares, the false wheat, that think they're so righteous that they're going to preserve humanity and a human seed like the seed faults in, in Svalbard Island in Norway. Instead of a human seed, these monsters shall be sealed off in the bowels of Hades forever. And, God, uh, <laughs> nobody can outdo God. Exactly. And of course, no. Satan wants to, but Satan is the ultimate loser of yeah. all the universe, of all that's, creation. That's and what we call the loser These clowns, uh, you know, I always say let's step way back and way back from the trees, look at the forest, and then way back from the forest and look at the patterns. And if you look at, you know, you've got all this economic stuff, all this police stuff, State stuff, all the false flags, all the wars, uh, the the coming economic crash, etc., etc., and and the deliberate kill programs like the BP oil disaster and all. But on top of it, you have the solar flares, which are causing vol increased volcanic activity. You have the these uh, comets and asteroids moving very close to Earth now, and all this <coughs> is somehow together because we're in going into yeah. the end well, uh, the end times yeah. now by and october uh, october 3rd to 5th here's right. the october 3rd to 5th october 3rd to 5th exactly tim october 3rd to 5th this year this uh, s uh, 2012 comet will be 16 times brighter than the moon in a full moon 16 times 16 times brighter. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, I knew yeah. that they were talking about it being brighter, but 16 times? Right. You now, realize it's about... almost like a second sun. Right, exactly. Uh, and, and basically, remember now, if you go back to the star church, we know there were the signs in the heavens when Jesus came. I believe these are signs that the second coming, that the, but when, when Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, a father in the flesh comes, he has to first rise in our hearts. People think that they can solve it with geopolitical or with science or politics or technology. No. no. If you don't have God in your heart, if you can't have the rise of the Spirit of the Most High in your spirit, you'll never perceive and understand uh, what's going on. You'll never understand. If you don't have God in your heart, you're a damn, and I mean that literally, damn fool. 
Right, what they'll do is they'll say, well, Deagle, you're nuts. Oh, Tim Alexander, you're nuts. You're just one of these wacky right guys. No, we're not. We are the sons of Issachar. We are the prophets of this age. We are the ones that 10,000 years from now, our words have spoken and listened to will be recorded for posterity for humanity to remember that if we do not constantly have in our civilization a million years from now, mankind knowing that our God is God and he loves us, cares for us, but we need to repent we need to turn to him for solutions and not try to figure it out ourselves. And that if we don't, we are doomed. Get right with God. Yeah, we're doomed. Now I want to turn it over to uh, Chris because I see nuclear events. If we have a CME, we talked yesterday with uh, our uh, expert on coronal mass ejections, uh, Mr. Michael Maloof. His book is, a, uh, is basically called the, uh, let me pull it up here. A Nation Forsaken, and you can go to, to uh, Amazon, you can go to WND World Net Daily. Uh, I think that when we have a CME, probably in the next two years, I am ballparking it. Again, remember, I'm not prophesying this. When I prophesy, I'll tell you what it is, I'll preface that, that we have a 70 to 85% chance of a major drop and destruction of the, uh, of the grid, at the very least, in North America and across the Northern Hemisphere. An 80, 85% chance which means civilization, as you know, it is going to collapse. <clears throat> they are not hardening the grid on purpose because they want the collapse, they want to hide in underground layers, and they could care less if we eat each other. And people say, no, well, a first thing that's going to happen, we saw it happen with San Onofre, that's 12 miles from where I live. A hot shutdown is going to cause massive release of radiation, more than two weeks where they lose backup diesel power, and we're going to have meltdowns and loss of containment and massive radiation release caused by cyber attacks from the Blue Army in Tianjin, China, or from uh, from Tehran, or any Fukushima's other country. Fukushima's everywhere. Right. We're going to have an American Fukushima. And when a CME hits, you have four phases, and uh, people need to understand this. The first phase, you have the light phase. It takes eight and a half minutes for light with UV strobing to strike the earth. So you're going to get third-degree burns from ultraviolet light, plus it's the rest of your immune system in the cataracts. Second phase, it takes somewhere around three to four hours for you to have what's called the electron and proton storm that hits the Earth. And that impinges on the magnetosphere. But the final one that blows the hell out of the grid and everything else electronic, if it's not in a Faraday cage, is the plasma field, which will take two and a half to four days, depending on its speed coming from the sun. When that hits with trillions of, of, of gigatons of energy and force, it will blow the hell out of anything electronic, and we'll have a Carrington event that will bring us back, not to the Dark Ages, not to even the Stone Age. We're going to be talking about pre-Stone Age, because human beings don't know how to grow food. Uh, they don't know how to, to even kill a sheep. They don't know how to take care of themselves. All they do know how to do is go helter-skelter. They need well, the Amish it. might survive. Yeah, but the Amish will be attacked by the uh, surrounding maniacs. You see, yeah. your real danger is, that's why I tell people that the most important prepping thing is to tell your damn neighbors to start prepping. Because if they don't prep, they're going to be at the front door starving to death, angry, and rabid like the zombie apocalypse. Why do you think the what's called the World War Z is out there coming up this year with Brad Pitt? The reason is, they think we're the zombies. And in fact, one of the bioweapons the Russians developed is a virus that causes massive spread that destroys the cortex of human beings and turns them immediately into zombies and the Russians have had this for 40 years yeah yeah so the reason why Brad Pitt's in the movie and why the media are doing it is what's called hoodwinking the globalists are already proving to themselves that we're fit to die by the billions also predictive programming exactly Welcome back, and uh, yeah, just to talk about the Dreamliner, the uh, Japanese, by the way, uh, have shut down all the Dreamliner fleet, uh, and by the way, these are minor problems. If you've gone on the Dreamliner, even if you're in economy, any other class on any other aircraft is no class at all. Uh, and I can tell you, here's what the real scenario is. Uh, there are teething problems that are minor, but what's really going on behind the scenes is the Chinese have already stated this to Boeing Aerospace and the U.S. government. Just like when Bill Clinton passed over all kinds of advanced technology when he was putting up the Iridium satellite program, supercomputers and other things, the man should be strung up by his toenails. What we have is the Chinese are saying this, you American scum owe us three trillion, you give us intellectual property for Boeing Dreamliner, 
will be even. The they want in ten years to make China all. way too much. China is, well, and by the way, this is not America. This is globalist assholes like uh, Bill Clinton, who was a was a Rhodes Scholar. And these people, what they want to do is they want to handle over the China. illegitimate uh, Rockefeller. Right. Now, so uh, we want to hear about this information from uh, Chris. We've got San Onofre. They're going to restart in March. That's 12 miles from where I live. These maniacs better damn well not start this because we're going to sue their ass off. We have a situation where the American Fukushima, if we have a CME, we're going to have American Fukushima. It's going to happen not a day later or a week later. It's going to happen immediately. And because it's going to do two reasons, firstly, what's called hot shutdowns of reactors that will go critical. Number two is when you strike the Earth with a Carrington-type event, you're going to have superquakes around the world that will release energy from the San Andreas Fault, from the New Madrid Fault System, and we're going to have American Fukushima's like crazy. Let, let me just say, uh, the, the IAEA wrote a report, and this is a Fukushima-related um, article, and what they come out with is that, uh, that you could construe the information as that low, less, well, actually up to 10 rem is not a bad thing for your body. But really what they're talking about is, um, they, they were actually talking about how this is calculated. Forbes jumped on that. Now, this is where the spin really starts to happen. Technical information gets put out Forbes, and I send you that article, Dr. Bill. They're jumping on saying, radiation is not so bad for you. You know, what, what are you guys complaining about? And that, that's the part. I, I'm going to take some exception to that, and I'll do, I'll do it right here. What, what they're talking about is how it's calculated, and the, that's the actual technical information. What really is nobody's talking about internal contamination. That is the crux of the matter. You know that there have been releases of, of heavy metals, that are highly energetic, and if that nobody's talking. I'm even talking about external doses of some of some uh, acute exposure, or where. Uh, but what I'm talking about is more important: is how much of this stuff you're actually going to inhale, ingest, and get inside your body, where it's unable to be flushed out of your system. Right. You're talking about bioaccumulation. For example, Fukushima goes on yeah. at its current level of burps and radiation. The level of radiation, not just on the West Coast, but because it basically comes down the rain across the entire Northern Hemisphere, will be the equivalent to what Fukushima is today in 2017, 2018. And that means basically that human reproduction will shut down because anybody foolhardy enough to have a child in five or ten years, if Fukushima completely loses, or if we have American Fukushimas, like they're advising women in northern Japan, have an abortion, which I don't recommend. I don't just support at all. But get sterilized because you don't want to bring a child into this world. Or submit your gametes to a laboratory of a state-run facility like the globalists want so they can do polar body exclusion to make certain your fetus is disease-free and doesn't have any genes it would cause them to literally resist the state. And people say, oh no, Dr. Deagle, they wouldn't do that. They don't want to have child control and laboratories where you have gamete for fallopian tube transport. I, well, I, I have to say to them, I presented this paper 20 years to go to the Royal Commission on New Reproductive Technologies to the Canadian government is one of my papers, and I can tell you, hell they will. They're damn well going to do whatever they can right out of the bowels of Hades and don't underestimate the dark majesty of evil of the intelligence behind this monstrosity because they're damn well moving with people like Puppet Obama. This guy is the best blessing for the right, the conservative right ever had. Anybody that's foolhardy enough to think that Obama is a good man with good intentions, they have not been around for the last four years. Well, and don't know history. Well, I just wanted to make sure we knew that uh, Forbes is ignoring a giant. Uh, they're, they're spinning it really, really a lot. Well, well why, why is Forbes doing that? Let's, let's just do war games. Why the hell would Forbes say this? Why are they saying there won't be American Fukushima's? Why are they saying there's no danger to power blackouts of reactors when we know that in 2013, 2014, the chances of a CME striking the Earth to could blow our, our power grid all to hell, our uh, so-called electronic age with all our fancy gadgets, iPods, iPhones, uh, Android, and everything, uh, how about not the Dark Ages, not the Stone Ages, how about the uh, ancient tar pits of the Earth before even life occurred? America will be turned into a dead zone. If we have something like this happen, small pockets of humanity will survive, and the rest will eat each other. It'll be like Masada on steroids. Yeah, and, and uh, you know we've been talking about CMEs. I hate to change the subject really quickly, but there was a report that I sent you uh, a couple of weeks ago that the beginning right. of the study that at least they already know the answer that CMEs... I, I 
I posted that up, by the way. Well, I mean, effects on nuclear plants is something to be concerned about and analyzed. Oh, oh, and oh course, concerned. Does that, does that mean that all the NRC staff need to go to their psychotherapist and get therapy so they're no longer concerned? Or does it mean they have to move their ass and do something about it? <laughs> well, that, that obviously, it's the, it's the latter. So, uh, ah, yeah, okay. so, your guest is correct, and uh, actually, uh, I'd have to read his book because it sounds interesting to me. Well, The Nation Forsaken by Michael Malouf, who's a government agent inside various departments, and he's in a panic over this. He'll be back on the program. We need to get him on with you and other experts because people need to understand Dr. Deagle is operating on three levels. I'm opening it up to have experts like yourself, Chris. And by the way, that's your radio name. That's not your real name. You're one of top 40 and nuclear safety experts in the world in America. Number two, we need to understand that we're presenting information so people ask better questions that's number two. And number three, they have to take action, whether it's just getting to prepare, telling their congressmen and senators to do to harden the grid, uh, to, to move to newer technology, and people have to realize we are killing the oceans. Nuclear has to be in our future with the current carrying capacity of the planet. And it's not peak. It's not peak oil. It's not CO2. It's peak oxygen. You destroy the lungs of the planet, and you have the world of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. You can't climb stairs because you don't have lungs. And the fact is, when you still keep on cutting down the rainforest and destroying the benthic layer of the upper 30, uh, 30 feet or 10 meters of the ocean that has the phytoplankton to make 80% of the world's oxygen, you don't have SUVs. You, you don't have a weed whackers to knock down your weeds in your yard. You don't have industry. You don't have anything. In fact, you'll be gasping with the oxygen level drops like it did during the dinosaurs after the asteroid hit, where we estimate that the oxygen level was two atmospheres at 35 to 40 percent dropped to five percent at one atmosphere and the daughter hello yeah i can hear you tim oh, okay so chris uh, tell us uh, tell us more where do you think this is going or is the nrc going to wake up or and smell a coffee or are we going to deal with 2013 being another year we're just waiting for hell to break loose never rely on an agency to uh to keep you safe, you're going to have to. You're going to have to provide. Well, in other words, my my, my congressman is Bedero Issa, who actually has two clues to rub together. Uh, he happens to be Lebanese, like I'm part Lebanese. Uh, he has. He actually stands up for the truth in terms of balancing the budget, and he's been in Congress long enough to know that everything is so corrupt that literally, uh, if we don't stand up, there won't be an America. There won't even be a world left. This world won't even be fit for cockroaches and bacteria if we if if Obama's plans and the plans of the globalists continue. But see, that's what Satan wants. Yeah, it won't be fit. People say, you're just exaggerating, Deagle. I said, no, I happen to be either, we want to look at it, your perspective, fortunate or unfortunate enough, and I don't want any more damned emails of people say, Deagle, you've got Forrest Gump syndrome. You always think you present yourself in all these places. How could you be in all these places, Deagle? And the reason is because I'm a willing private in God's army. And when God says, go to the top of that damn hill, Deagle, I don't question God. I say, yes, sir, God, I'm going there. If God says, say something, it'll even piss people off or make them think or make them vomit or make them just curse like the, the, the ground I walk on I could care less if God says it may save their sorry physical carcass and their soul I'm going to do it and uh, people need to realize if you don't have a fire in your belly like Jeremiah said even though I wish to be silent the fire of the truth of the most high God burns in my bosom to tell the truth to the people of Israel to repent and if we do not repent this year and the years that follow is we are heading into the bowels of Hades as Obama and his minions and the other maniacs of the globalist bankers march us toward the open maw of a volcanic disaster of financial chaos, environmental chaos, near-earth objects, and collapse of our civilization. We have a choice. The first choice is love Jesus, love God, and share that love with your neighbor. Prep for what's the future to coming and rely firstly and mostly on God because let me tell you this is going to be a, a year that's going to change everything thank you Chris thank you Tim back tomorrow with a firing line preparing the civil defense martial law and earth changes follow up